Praise God. Welcome to the Bell Meadows Baptist Church to our 11 o'clock worship hour. If you're visiting with us today, so glad to have you. And if you joined us by way of radio or internet connection, so glad to have you join us today. Page 86, In the Garden. Page 86, let's stand and do our best this morning. <laughs> Thank you for being here this morning. It's good to see each one of you. And uh, let's remember uh, choir practice tonight for the young people, all youth choir tonight at 5. And uh, we appreciate you having them back for that and getting ready to sing some new songs. And uh, that will be a great blessing, I promise. Uh, have your young people part of that. And uh, they that will uh, be a blessing to us and them. And then also... Uh, remember to sign up for the meal on Wednesday night, and uh, be, we'll be prepared uh, for that. And uh, you come on and fellowship with us on Wednesday night. They do meals for two dollars. It's pretty cheap, isn't it? I don't. Remember, I think maybe when I was in school, that was what school lunches cost. And this is a whole lot better than that. And so, uh, anyways, you sign up for that on the back bulletin board, and uh, we will uh, be prepared for you and that. And so, remember these things and. Good number of prayer requests this morning and uh, procedures and a lot of uh, sickness and things going on. And so continue to pray for those that are on our list, that uh, long-term list of sickness and salvation, and a good number of people on that. And also be praying for Brother Dewey, Wayne Schaefer, uh, Johnny Grubb, Angie Barr, Becky Barrett, Eden McHugh, Shirley Addison, Anthony Rowe, Christina Clark, Daryl Nelson. Uh, Stephanie Rourke, Brother Mark Levina, Miss Pat Mullins, 
she has a PET scan on the 30th. Geneva Lawson, Tyler Grubb, uh, pray for Stephanie Gesser, Geffers, pray for uh, Jessica Edwards, and uh, going to camp with a bunch of kids. And, and Miss Jessica, I know how to pray for you for that. I know what to pray for. And uh, just make sure none of them bring shaving cream to get you with, okay? Not that I know anything about that. And I might have taught them a few bad lessons uh, along the way, and uh, you'll just have to forgive me for it because I'm not sorry. We'll just go keep doing it. Amen. And uh, also pray for Melissa Boss. So let's remember these. Brother Fred Bond, you come this morning and pray and uh, for the service. How many unspoken requests do we have today? And uh, I got on here... Uh, a name on the list I mentioned, a very special prayer request for a man named Anthony Rowe. If you just write that uh, name down and uh, pray for him as you think about it, uh, I know we'd appreciate it greatly. Thank you, brother. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you and we want to thank you and praise you for this opportunity again to be back in your house this morning. Lord, what a blessing it is. Like this morning, I just walked outside and looked at the sunshine and Amen. listened to the birds singing this beautiful Lord's Day. And I just thank the Lord for it. And we could be in a worse place, you know, but what a blessing. And Lord, we thank you and praise you for all you do. Thank you for everything you've done this past week for us, Lord. And thank you for the things you're about to do. And Lord, we pray that you'll have your will and your way with these services here this morning. We pray you bless the choir as they sing. Be with Brother Dewey as he delivers the message, uplifting Lord and strengthening. And we pray for him, Lord. We pray you'll keep him safe and healthy. And Lord, just have your will in your way. Help us to save the unsaved ones and reclaim the backslidden. And we'll just thank you and praise you, Father, for all you do. We ask you to be with those in Israel this morning, Lord. And help us with the upcoming tent revival. We pray your blessings upon that. We just want to thank you for everything you do, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's stand one more time, if you would, please. Page 208. Grace greater than our sin. Page 208.
we welcome you to the house of the Lord today. Good to be in the house of God and be able to come to church. And we do uh, welcome those shut-in people today that are joining us by the radio, the internet. God bless you. Thank you for being with us there and pray for the work and be a part of it. If you, if we're your church, you might want to be a part of what's going on here, get involved in the giving and missions. And uh, you said, well, if I send money, will I get so much back? I'll tell you what you get is God's blessings, amen? And uh, I was telling them in Sunday school class, I was uh, coming home from revival of the morning. They had a meeting, and this guy was talking about sending $1,000 to this station. And I said, boy, I, I might have send them $1,000 so they can keep gun smoke on there, all right? <laughs> you know? And, uh, hey, I got news for you today, friend. God can help you and bless you whether you can send a thousand dollars here or not amen and uh, you you put the lord first in your giving see what the lord will do for you let's give the day to god and i appreciate all matt abel won't you come up and pray for us today and a lot of people will pray for let's pray for the man that i dealt with this week brother tim did god will just really do something for him and i believe there's some interest today we got a lot going on what's happened you know just yesterday with the events in Israel, and um, uh, we're, we, we're not really in a pr prophetic uh, study right now here in the church, but I think one may be coming pretty quick, and uh, we are not just in the last days, folks. We are in the last of the last of the last days, all right? I mean, listen, uh, uh, you, we're, we're seeing prophecy you remember when old uh, that guy parole ran for office? He said that the jobs would leave America and it'd be just like a, a sucking sound of jobs leaving America. You remember that? The guy that had the big ears. You remember that, huh? That's back when old old uh, old boy bit that guy's ear boxing, and they was going to try to schedule him to uh, to fight uh, Tyson because he had enough ears to go ten rounds with him. You know, <laughs> but hey, I won't tell you. I, I won't tell you right now. Prophetically, that's what we're watching. The prophecies coming together like in a, in a vacuum flying today. So, boy, we better be ready because ready or not, Jesus is coming. Pray for us. Ask God bless us. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for all your blessings you've given us. Lord, I lift up all the prayer requests to you that you would answer them, that you would touch those people that are, that are lost that need to come to you, dear Lord. Lord, I, I pray for this offering that you would just bless it, dear Lord. You bless his service. And all these things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
Uh, be mindful and prayerful for Brother Johnny Grubb and 
he was doing good and uh, on the men some and had a bad fall and he's broke his leg. So pray for him. Keep him in your prayers that the Lord will be with them and he can, I may have to have surgery on his leg. Let's open our Bibles to Proverbs chapter number 30. Proverbs chapter number 30. I will read one verse, verse 33. And I'm glad you're here in the house of the Lord today. It's good to have you. And if you're here visiting for the first time, we're so glad you're with us today and hope that you will uh, be blessed of the Lord. And I'm going to preach today on this thought to stir you up, to stir you up. And I want to use Proverbs, I want to use a scripture in Proverbs here as our text to get started today. If you'll stand with me, we'll read verse 33 and we're going to zero in on the first third of that verse the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 33, Surely the churning of milk bringeth forth butter, and the wringing of the nose bringeth forth blood, so the forcing of wrath bringeth forth strife. Father, how we thank you for your goodness to us, and I pray that you'll help us today in this message, and Lord, uh, that we can carry these thoughts home with us today. And that we'll leave here stirred up for you, dear God. Our pure minds stirred up. Our, our pure conscience stirred up. Uh, God, a fresh desire and a revived and renewed spirit to serve you, to know of you, to grow in you, to represent you, uh, to be your ambassador, God, in this world. We're going to thank you for what you do for us now. We know that things are happening very quickly now. God, we are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and I pray for that this morning. And I pray you'll help us now to zero our thoughts on this thought. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And you'll be seated today, and I appreciate that. The Bible says here in Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 33, you might turn me down just a tad, please, that the churning, surely the churning of milk bringeth forth butter. The churning of milk bringeth forth butter. Now, we're a long ways from a culture and a society that still makes their own butter. How many of you had moms or grandmothers that made butter? How many here had folks? Look at the hands that's raised and in different kinds of, uh, of churns they would use. Sometimes they would take a, a jar and they would just shake that jar, like a, a, you know, a three-gallon jar or something or two-gallon jar. Sometimes they had uh, uh, churns. I, used, I had an old antique churn that had a paddle in it that you, it looked like an ice cream, an old ice cream freezer. And some of them had the uh, lids on the top where it would go up and down with a paddle inside uh, that would, uh, you know, work the milk. And, uh, and then they would get the butter, they would get the butter and they would have the butter milk uh, so that uh, the old people had three kinds of milk they had what they called sweet milk, and uh, sweet milk was whole milk, and then they had buttermilk, and then they had what they called Blue John. How many knows what Blue John is, huh? That's skim milk, all right? And that's how, that's how the old people operated. And so we're going to preach on to stir you up. And let's go to Second Peter uh, chapter number 1, and this is the, this is the scripture we, we want to zero in, but I want you to have the thought of the churning of milk bringeth forth butter because this is a principle that God gives us that we are to make a spiritual application on. So 2 Peter chapter 1, I want you to notice verse number, he talks a lot in here about being stirred up. Now notice in verse 12 of chapter 1 of 2 Peter. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in present truth. Notice verse 13. Yea, I think it meet, as long as I'm in this tabernacle, to what, church? To stir you up. Everybody say that. To what? To stir you up. To stir you up by putting you in remembrance. To stir you up. Now, if you go over to chapter 3 of 2 Peter in verse 1 and 2, he says, uh, uh, this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I what? I stir you up. I stir you up. 
uh, I stir you up in which I stir you up your pure minds by way of remembrance, you see. And uh, when we were in chapter, uh, he, uh, Paul, uh, Peter says, as long as I'm in this tabernacle, I want to stir you up and stir up your pure mind. You'll notice there in chapter 3 in verse 11 that he's talking about the coming of the Lord, the day of the Lord in verse 10. And in verse 11, seeing them that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness, you see. Hey, God wants us to be stirred up and to be mindful of the things of the Lord. Now, Proverbs 30, 33 is the recipe for butter. And if you're going to make butter, you've got to have three things. You've got to have, number one, the right ingredients. And what does it take to make butter? What do you have to have to make butter? Uh, it is one ingredient, uh, but it has to be in the right condition. And that is whole milk. Whole milk, milk that is not pasteurized nor homogenized. You know what that means? You know what pasteurized means? This old fellow one time, he, he came into some money and he told his wife, he said, uh, I, I've got some money now, we can do something uh, elaborate for you. And she said, well, I've read where these uh, city women take milk baths. And she said, I'd like to have one. So he went down to the dairy and said, I need some milk. And the man said, well, uh, what do you need? Uh, he said, uh, I need, my wife wants to take a, a milk bath. And he said, well, do you want it pasteurized? He says, no, it doesn't have to need be pasteurized. It can be just about right here. It'll be good enough, you know. And, uh, but when you pasteurize, uh, you heat the milk up, kill the bacteria in it, and uh, so that it, it can't, uh, the, the bad bacteria, but it kills the good bacteria too. Then homogenize means a process whereby the butter and the milk are uh, homogenized together so that if you've, had, how many's ever drank raw milk from the cow? And so you go the next morning in the refrigerator and what do you have on the top? What do you have? What comes to the top? The cream does, you see. And so homogenized, you don't have that. It stays, it stays equal all the way through the milk. And, uh, and so you've got to have the right ingredients. Then you've got to have the right circumstances for those ingredients. And that means the right temperature. And there's a, temp there's a window of temperature to make butter. And then thirdly, you've got to have the right process, which is to churn and to churn and to churn. And so the churning of milk bringeth forth butter. I want you to uh, get this this morning. Brother uh, Kyle in Sunday school this morning said that 5% of what we hear we retain. And, uh, you know, I, I want to do better than that as a preacher of the gospel. I, that's why I preach the way I do. I want to preach something to you and sometimes maybe go over it and go over it because if we don't, you're not going to carry anything home with you. Amen. If you carry something home with you that you can use, praise God, we've had victory here today, amen? And that means you got stirred up, you see. That's what we want to do. Well, I remember when I was a boy, and some of my best memories of a boy was when we would go to grandmother's at Lost Creek, West Virginia, and everybody would come together on Sunday afternoon after church, and we'd make homemade ice cream. Oh, my soul has the best stuff you've ever eaten in your life. Now, I'm telling you, it's out of this world. And they, they didn't, they, they might have had electric uh, ice cream freezers. I never saw one. I didn't know there was such a thing. All we had was the old hand cranks. And boy, grandmother and mama and my, you know, Aunt Winnie and all Aunt Mary Lou and all of them, they, they'd get in there making the custard. And boy, they'd fix that custard, they called it, uh, that would put in the freezer. And then we had to have the ice, and then we had to have the salt. And so they'd start putting the ice in there, uh, and put that, they'd put it down in there and set it in the freezer, and they'd start putting the ice in there and then put a little layer of salt and put some more ice and then some salt. And it uh, seemed like Uncle Billy or Uncle Paul, one of them was kind of the uh, salt uh, uh, marshal, and he had to watch, make sure no salt got into the freezer 
eyes. You put the ice on there and covered it up. And then us kids, had we had the great job of cranking the ice cream. Oh, yeah. And I'll tell you what, I never minded that job too much because uh, if, you, if you cranked that ice cream freezer till it made ice cream, when they pulled that paddle out of there, you know, that swirled in that thing, it's, it's caked full of that good vanilla custard and frozen and you got to, that was yours. They would give you the paddle. Woo, I'm telling you what, that's worth cranking about 15 or 20 minutes there. Well, uh, those are some good memories I have as a boy. And uh, so, you know what? We had a finished product. And to my memory, we had the same product every time because we had the same ingredients. We had the same process and we agitated it and did the, the proper process and the right circumstances to get the finished product. Well, what is the product we're after here in this local church? What is the product that God is after in your life and mine? The Surely the churning of milk bringeth forth butter. Well, number one, God wants you to truly be saved. That's the most important thing. You must be born again, amen. I'm telling you folks, I wouldn't be surprised one bit if the angel in heaven isn't holding the trumpet right now, almost got it to his lips. Amen. You better be sure you're saved today. Don't you leave here lost without God. Don't you leave here wondering, hoping, thinking. You be sure you know that you know you're saved. Amen. Then, not only truly saved, but God wants us to be totally sanctified. And I'm not talking about sinless perfection, but I'm talking about our life surrendered to God, committed to God, growing in the grace and knowledge of God, and thirdly, to be tested and to be steadfast for God. That's the product we want, and we want to stir you up, amen. Now, we must have the pure, raw, true salvation to work with in this thing because I don't care how much you churn the wrong kind of milk. You, you can churn, you can churn pasteurized, homogenized milk till the cows come back home and you're not going to have any butter. Right? You, you know what? I believe today with all of my heart, I believe the cults, the contemporary crowd, the Calvinistic crowd, the corrupt churches of our day have ruined people and that spiritually they're pasteurized, homogenized, and petrified. Amen. Well, thank God, I'm glad that we can, and I want to get into this message, this is all introduction. God, God is the only one that can produce the true ingredients. And now that they are, now that you are saved, and let's go back to 2 Peter chapter number one. I want to show you this, and we'll get into the message and give it to you just as quick as we can. Now, I want you to notice verse three and four of chapter one of 2 Peter. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the what, church? Divine nature. See, we're, this is not religion. This is not something that we can do. We're talking about something God does. Amen. A divine nature, having escaped the corruption as in the world through lust. And notice please verse five. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith. You see, we gotta have something to start with. Say amen. And that's when you get saved. Hallelujah, I'm glad I'm saved today. Salvation is not the finished place. Now, it's the finished place for our position and our standing with God. Because once you're justified, you can be no more justified or any less justified. But it is not the finished place with what God wants to do in your life. He has a tremendous plan and a will and a design for you. And we go from that ground of justification now into the ground of sanctification. In justification, I'm saved from the penalty of sin. But in sanctification, I'm being saved from the power of sin, 
One day I'll be glorified and I'll be saved from the very presence of sin. But we, we are in this place, if you're saved and you're here today, you're listening to me today. You're in that place between uh, justification and glorification and that's sanctification. That's the sanctified life. So, let me say this and we'll launch into the message now. Let's not forget that we have had the wrong thing stirred up in us all week. How many can say amen? How many's had a hard week, huh? They've had a hard week. Doesn't be ashamed of. Life, man that's born of a woman, his days are short and full of trouble. We live in a media day. We live in a day where everybody is fed media constantly. Uh, the programming, the music, the images, all that's about us stirs up, not the Lord in us, but stirs up our flesh. Is that not right? Lust is stirred up of all the pornography. Pride is stirred up. Uh, jealousy, prejudice, envy, anger, bitterness, uh, covetousness, materialism, falsehoods, all that kind of thing stirred up. Sometimes I come to church, especially on Wednesday night, and I'm in an awful shape uh, coming to church. But boy, I tell you what, it's something about getting in the house of God. There's something about, I remember I had a fellow one time uh, that came here and he ran a shop over here and uh, I went in there one day to talk to him and to see him and he got out of church and going to talk to him a little bit and all of the men that worked for him came up to me and they said, Preacher, get him back in church. We can't live with him when he's out of church. Nobody can live with him when he's out of church. I thought, well, praise God, I'll try, amen. Well, that's a testimony to the church. So for a few minutes, I want to I want to preach on some things that God wants to stir up in our lives. Number one, may God stir up your love today, your love. Uh, you know, uh, love number one for your for God, love for your creator. I want you to go to Deuteronomy chapter number six and notice verse four. This is probably not being, not being a Jew and not being raised in that kind of tradition and teaching and everything. I'm going to say this as an outsider that I believe this may be the most important two verses in the whole Bible concerning a Jew. This is taught to them. This is what they stand upon. Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 5. But it ought to be important to us. Now look what the Bible said here, O Israel. Did everybody find that? Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 and 5. I want you to read it with me this morning. Hear, O Israel. Come on, let's do it. Everybody together. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all of thy soul and with all of thy might. Amen. Praise God. You know what? If you're going to do that, if you're going to love the Lord thy God, you're going to have to know him. But if you're going to do it with all your heart and all your soul and all your might, you're going to have to have some help doing that, praise God. Because my flesh is not going to help me in that endeavor. My flesh will hinder me in that endeavor. But boy, when I come in the house of God and get around people of like precious faith and we get to singing about grace greater than all of my sins and we get talking about the blood and these great uh, truths and in Sunday school, I'll tell you what, buddy, something starts stirring. There's a little wheel starts moving in the big wheel. Praise God. And you know what? You leave the house of God ready to go into this world for another week. God stir up our love for the creator. And then number two, let God stir up your love for your companion. Now Ephesians 5.25 says, that husbands love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for the church. Don't you like that, ladies? Huh? You ought to. Amen. You wives ought to love that. And the Bible says uh, in Titus chapter 2, verse 3 through 5, I want us to turn over there just for a moment. I know Titus is a little bit hard to find in the Bible, but um, I love this instruction. Now, the Bible says that the elder women are to instruct the younger women. You want to be, you want to find somebody in your life that can help you, mentor you, and give you counsel and instruction. And if you're a young 
wife and a young mother, you want to talk to an elderly lady, an older lady, a woman who's been a faithful wife, a faithful mother, who's had success raising her children, and their children are serving the Lord, you listen to that lady. Amen. I don't advise you listen to somebody who's been married 14 times. Come on now. Not being mean. Look what he said here in Titus chapter number 2 and verse 3. The aged women likewise that they may be in behaviors become of holiness. By the way, you never get old enough that sin is not still sin. You say, well, I'm in my 70s. I can live with somebody now and it's okay. No, sin's still sin. Right? <laughs> well, it got quiet then. All right. We had a body in here. We could have a really good funeral right now, all right? I tell you what, that disturbs me. I see people who have been faithful to God in their life and they get up in years and all of a sudden they do some of the craziest stuff. Why would you throw away your testimony after all the battles? No, okay, pray for me. The aged women, that they may be in behaviors become of holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the who, verse four? Who? The young women to be sober, to what? To love their husbands. You said, yeah, but you don't know who I'm married to. Well, he's your husband, amen. Love their husbands, to love their what? To love their children, to be discreet. That means you're careful about your testimony, you're careful about your eyes, how you dress, where you go, not being flirty and things like that. Amen. Chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Hey, listen, love, love the Lord. Love your companion. Thirdly, love your children, praise God. I want God to stir that love up in your heart today. To love our children is to fight for them. Amen. I'll tell you what, we're watching some wonderful things in this church out of our young people. And I believe with all my heart, Brother Tim, it's because parents have got a hold of this thing that there's something I need to do in this thing. My children are going to turn out right. I'm going to have to see that they turn out right. Not sit by and take a chance. Go to Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13, uh, there's three scriptures in Proverbs I want to give you real quickly, and we'll not be able to elaborate today. But Proverbs 13 and verse 24, look what the Bible says here. I, I want you to notice this, please. The Bible says, he that spareth his rod. Now, I want you to, when you read the word rod in the King James Bible, I want you to always think of, what that is means, it means a switch. Not a stick, not a club. It's a stick. It's a switch. A little loose switch. Well, that won't do any good. I guarantee you I can cut a switch if you'll wait on me today. If I'd have some volunteers... And we don't, pre, we don't believe in dancing around here, but if you come up here and you let me use that switch on you, I'll guarantee I'll have you dancing today. Say amen. And you won't go to the hospital from the switch. You might fall from dancing and get hurt, but you're not, huh? And mama used a switch. Daddy used to belt. Which one did you like the most? I never wanted to decide. The rule with the switch when mama called us in was you could dance, but you couldn't run. Amen. Now, I want you to always remember that. He that spared his rod or the switch hateth his son, but he that loveth him, chasteneth him, switches him be times when they need it. Sometimes they need it more than other times. You ever noticed how much harder it is to deal with 
disciplinary things when the moon is full. Amen. <laughs> hey, go to Proverbs 22, 15. I'm just through out here for being silly. Amen. Proverbs 22, verse 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, what? He'll not depart from it. I said, well, I'm raising my children. The Bible didn't say raise up a child. It said train up a child. Training takes consistency, correction and consistency and encouragement. Amen? You want to learn about discipline? Go stay with the Amish people if they'd let you for a while. They know how to discipline a mule and a horse and oxen, and they know how to discipline children. Same principles work. You don't have quite as much discipline needed for a child as a mule, but it's the same principle. Now, notice there in verse 15, the Bible says, Foolishness is bound in the heart of the child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. And uh, Proverbs 23, chapter 23 and verse 13 says, Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him or switch him, with the switch, with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat or switch him with the switch and shall deliver his soul from what? From hell. Oh, my. You need to tell, when you have to discipline your children, you need to tell them, I love you too much to just let you go to hell and let you become some thug and some outlaw and some drug dealer and dope head and prostitute or whatever. I'm not going to do that. I'm not just, I'm just not going to let that happen. I love you too much. Amen. Hey, stir up your love for your children. By the way, by the way, we need to equal uh, encouragement to our children and, and give them encouragement. Then stir up your love for the church, not only love for your creator, your companion, your children. God, I want God to stir up a love for your church. Praise God. Go with me to Psalm 84. Psalm 84. <clears throat> you know, we act like today from the government and all, and I think some states maybe have laws against corporal punishment. We don't in Virginia. It's not illegal. You just need to use some tact about it because we've got a lot of absolute idiots out here today. Psalm, and I'm not, about, I'm not advocating any kind of abuse on a child. I think, that's, I think that's demonic. Amen? Did your parents used to tell you, this is hurting me more than it's hurting you? Did you say that to your children? Because it does. That's not, somebody who abuses a child, they take pleasure from doing that. It's not something they feel like they need to, well, let's go on. Look, look at Psalm 84 and verse 5, uh, or verse number 10, what the Bible says. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. You know what our desire ought to be, every member of this church ought to be? To have something you do for God in this local church and that you are so excited about that job that you do. Now, it might be just being faithful and coming and hearing the pastor, and, and, uh, but, but look at Psalm 92, 13. Psalm 92, 13, while we're there in Psalms. Look what the Bible says, um, verse 12 and 13. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall what? Flourish in the courts of of our God, they shall bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing, amen. And then in, uh, in there in uh, Psalm 93 and verse five, notice what the Bible says uh, in Psalm 93 and verse five, the Bible says, thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness, what? Becometh thy house O oh Lord, forever. Amen? You say, why in the world do we try to have standards and do things different here at Bell Matters? Because holiness becometh thy house. 
The contemporary church movement is weak as circus lemonade. There's very little holiness. I talked to a preacher this week. He'd been in a church over 30 years. He left the church and immediately they departed and they, he said now uh, they, they departed from any kind of dress standards and the music now has gone completely wild and now they said we're going to turn the lights down and we're going to the nightclub style thing. I don't have a coon dog right now but if I had one I wouldn't let him be in something like that. I wouldn't even let a poodle dog be in something. I wouldn't even let a cat be in something like that. Amen. Oh, that God would help us in this day, that we would have love for our Creator, love for, I want to stir that up. I want to stir up God's love for Him, for your companion, for your children, for your church, uh, love for other Christians, the brothers and sisters around us. What does the Bible say in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10? Listen to what the Bible says here. And this is interesting scripture uh, in, in uh, Galatians 6 and verse 10. And keep your Bible out and stay with us, all right? The Bible says, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are what? Are the household of faith. Amen? Oh, my uh, I tell you what, I think, I think God's doing some wonderful things here. And uh, I love it in the church when uh, Sunday night comes and uh, I get home and then the next morning I'm in my devotion time and things. I just have such a, uh, there's been just such a good day in the house of God, a sweet day. The Lord moving and working and testimonies and the songs of Zion and this precious word of God being preached and there's just something wonderful about that. Amen. Praise God. I want God to give us a love for the house of God, a love for other Christians and brothers and sisters, and then a, last, a, a stir up a love in our hearts for the condemned, for the lost that aren't saved. May God stir us up today, our love. May our love be stirred up. Number two, I pray that God would stir up not only our love today, but stir, and by the way, uh, listen, charity, now by the faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Praise God. What did Paul say there in 1 Corinthians 13? Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I become a sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. Though I have to get the prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains, and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity embeth not. Charity bondeth not. Charity, uh, uh, it, it, it does not, uh, it, the charity, I uh, think of no evil, praise God. How he went on to say, rejoice us not in iniquity, but rejoice us in truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether it be tongues, they shall cease. Whether it be knowledge, it shall vanish. Whether it be prophecies, they shall. But he went on to say, uh, uh, now he says, when we were children, we, we, we need to, let's just turn over there right quick. It's got, uh, I blame all my uh, mental failures on COVID, amen. You ought to get something out of this low down COVID. Let me just go through this again before I move on. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Though I have to get the prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I'm nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to be the poor, though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity but not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. We see a lot of puffed up stuff today. It does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, uh, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. Whether it be, uh, whether it be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether it be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. 
but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. And quote the last verse with me, church. And now, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even also as I'm known. And now abideth, help me, and now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is what? Charity. You think the devil likes what's going on in this church? No. So you know what he wants to do? He wants to divide us. He wants to sow discord. He wants to get people with hard feelings and bitterness towards each other. But if we stay humble and stay in love with the Lord and stay in love with each other, the devil can't do one thing. Say amen. He can't do one thing. Your love, God stir up your love. Number two, quickly, may God stir up our learning today. Let's go back to 2 Peter chapter 1. And I want you to notice, and we quoted this to you this morning here from 2 Peter uh, and I love this little book, and I've been working on memorizing these, these books, and it seems like you never really quite get it done, but it's so rich. Now, I want you to notice there that we talked about all these things, uh, verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption as in the world through lust. Look at verse 5 now. And besides this, Given all diligence, don't worry about anything now that you're saved, everything's great, just forget it, go on your way and forget God. Is that what it says? What does he say? Given all diligence, what? What's that word? Add. Add. Add to what? Your faith. This is saying you're saved, you have the faith. The faith is when you're born again and saved. So what do we add to our faith? Beside this, given all diligence, add to your faith, what? Virtue. And to virtue, what? Knowledge. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're learning today. How many has learned something today? You've learned something today. Isn't that great? You know, I pray for my grandchildren. I like to pray for them on Sunday morning. And I pray, God, I want you to give something to my grandchildren today that they'll carry with them the rest of their life. Not every sermon do we remember. Not every message do we remember. When we do, I believe that's a special day. Praise God. Now, what, what a blessing to have knowledge. Now, I want to show you in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 3, here we have the two avenues of knowledge as I would understand the Bible. This is a tremendous verse. Revelation 1.3 is a tremendous verse. Blessed is he that, number one, what? Does everybody find your place? I'll wait on you. I want you to see this. Revelation chapter 1, last book in the Bible, verse 3. I like to hear those pages, don't you? You're going to, if you're going to use the Bible online, why don't you put an app on it that'll make the pages rattle while you're looking? Wouldn't that be good? <laughs> All right. Blessed is he that, number one, what? Readeth. We ought to be readers. We got some books Wednesday night on how to be saved. What must I do to be saved? We, the church went ahead and bought a case of them. They're in the back back here. I've got my book on the rapture. I, I've not been able to give it away. I've had to sell it to try to, uh, so I can maybe have some more printed. But this book you can take, and they're free. What must I do to be saved? And uh, if you've got somebody that maybe will read that, you take them and see if they'll read that, and you read it yourself. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that what? What's the second thing? And here. Right? So we're doing both today, are we not? Are we not reading the Word of God and hearing the Word of God today? And what does the Bible say? Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and then do what? Keep those things which are written therein 
for the time is at hand. Praise the Lord. You know, that's a blessing, is it? I want God to stir up our love today, our learning, number three. I want God to stir up our labors today. Let's go to Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. And notice these verses. Many of you can quote Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. And it's very important verses on salvation. <clears throat> but I want everybody to turn there because I want us to look at, and I know I go over this a lot, these, some of these things. I, you don't have to tell me that. But uh, they are very essential and very important. Ephesians chapter 2, read it with me, verse 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now let's read verse 10 together. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. We are not saved by good works, we are saved to do good works, unto good works. Does that make sense? No amount of works you can do will get you to heaven. But how are you going to prove to me you love Jesus if there's no works in your life? Let's go over to Philippians chapter 2. Uh, remember, girls eat popcorn, so that'll help you there, all right? Galatians, Ephesians, uh, Philippians, Colossians. Look at Philippians chapter 2 and notice verse 12. Verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I this, this is talking about if you are saved, it should be coming out of you. It should be works coming out of you that is evidence of salvation. Well, I'd like for God to stir up our works. Amen. Go, go to Revelation chapter 2 with me a minute. And let's notice what the Bible says. Now, you have these seven churches in Revelation 2 and 3 that, that are addressed. And there in verse uh, in chapter 2 and verse 5, beginning in verse 1, we have the church of Ephesus. And so he's talking about, uh, let me just read these verses. And to the angel of the church of Ephesus write these things, saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, I know thy works and thy labors and thy patience and how that thou canst not bear them that are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not. Boy, if anybody was tried today that claims to be an apostle, they would be found they are not. And hast found them liars. And thou hast borne and hast patience and for my name's sake hast labored and not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Now look at verse 5. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and I will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Now, three words I want you to write down if you're taking notes on this point. Remember, repent, repeat. Remember, amen, do you remember when you were saved? Do you remember when you had a testimony for the Lord? Do you remember when the Lord, okay, now something's come into your life and that excitement, that joy is gone and sin has a hold in your life, repent of that. Get free of it. And so remember, repent, and go back to what you were doing, praise God. Y'all realize when the church departs from historic Christianity as we've watched, it's one of the signs of the coming of the Lord, that there's no way, Brother Tim, think about this, there's no way we can go back and do the first works today in 99% of the churches left in the world today. You cannot, you cannot go back and do those first works. They're no longer there to do. Does that make sense? When you depart from the faith, from the fundamentals of the faith, when you depart from the King James Bible and you depart from the hymns, 
we got a generation that's never heard the great hymns. Have no chance of hearing them or learning them. How are you going to go back and do those first works when they are not available? Amen? I'm glad we are still presenting those first works. And then, not only stir up your love, your learning, your labor. Fourthly, I want God to stir up my loathing, my loathing. Now, what should we loathe as a believer? What should we hate as a believer? I want more to hate sin. I hate sin. Sin is to blame. Sin is to blame. Don't, don't blame, don't blame uh, uh, everything people blame today. Everybody's in this, in this uh, victim mentality, and you know, and I'm not responsible because I, I, of this and that and the other. Well, that may have played in on it, but you're still responsible, friend. And with God, if you do the crime, you're going to do the time. Your life, hey, we ought to hate sin. I hate sin. Oh, I hate it. Number two, we ought to hate Satan. Don't have anything for the devil. Don't, don't, don't give place to the devil. Amen. We, you know, a lot of products and stuff now are so satanic. <laughs> a lot of things people are involved in, I know it that has a, a facade of being really nice and really wonderful, I want to tell you, my friend, it's tied straight in to the forces of hell and the Satan. No. No believer that loves the Lord should take uh, blood oaths and vows. Say amen. I hate sliding backwards. I hate, I hate, I hate my own flesh. Amen. <laughs> I really do. Of course, I don't mistreat it too much, but I, I, and then, and then we ought to really hate bringing shame to the Lord and bringing reproach to Christ. We ought to hate that. We ought to hate it to the place that we're real careful that we would not bring reproach to the Lord. Now, we've looked at stirring up your love, stirring up your learning, stirring up your labor, stirring up your low things, and I want to close. Number five, finally, may God stir up our longings. You know, in uh, 1 uh, Timothy chapter number 4, we have a wonderful promise here given. And I want you to turn there, please. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter number 4. Paul, or 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. And verse number, uh, he, he talks about uh, here in chapter 4. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove your brute, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come. You think it's come? Church? When they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves what? Teachers have an itch and ears. What is that? That's the preacher that tells the congregation exactly what they want to hear. Yeah. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto what? Fables. A lot of New Age movement in the church world today. Amen. I know by God's grace, we're not going to have it here. We're not having yoga here. You hear me? You do. Hey, if I tried to do yoga, I'd get ca caught up in some of the positions and never get out. It had to take me to the emergency room. Amen. But in these things that seem so innocent and so sweet and so kind, they teach you how to hold your hand. That circle is to encircle the cross. You hold that circle and... They say, now, when you do yoga, you do yoga, you clear your mind of everything. Now, I'd, I'd get, do pretty good with that. But then what you do is you're instructed that a name's going to come to you, and that's going to be your secret name. And you start calling that name and saying that name. Guess what that name is? That's not just your secret name. It's your own personal demon 
And in yoga, you are calling on that demon to possess you. Amen? That's turning your ears away from the truth, being turned to fables. And uh, now, now notice, please. I want you to notice what he says, verse 5, but watch thou in all things. We have to be really careful today, folks. We have to be a little extreme on some things. You'll get criticized, but I'd rather be criticized for going all the way with God than for having a bunch of compromise and stuff, and it comes to light in your life. Say amen. Yes, watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Look at verse 6, 7, and 8 now. For I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me on that day, and not to me only, but unto all of them that what, church? What now? Love his appearing. Oh, may God stir up our longing. Amen. Praise God. Even come quickly. I preached on, I preached on the rapture and stuff last week. And man, when the Lord comes, he's going to come and resurrect the dead bodies. And he's going to take us that are saved by his grace. And he's going to glorify our bodies. And we'll be just like Jesus. Hallelujah. And we're going to leave here in church of fire. Praising God. Amen. And going to the city of God. Hey, is that longing stirred up any in you today? Well, I would rather wait just a little bit. I got a few things I want to fix up. I got some things I need to get out of the refrigerator and out of the cupboards at the house and hid away. I got some things hid away. Hey, I tell you what you need to do. You need to go home and have a house cleaning. Amen. Gather up all that stuff, pour it out, burn it up, throw it away, get it out of your home, get it out of your life. Long for the coming of the Lord. Because it's just like, listen, folks, I'm closing. You parents know what it is. You probably feel as proud of your children when they come to you and they're brokenhearted and they're, they, they, have a, 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 they have a broken and a contrite heart. And they say, Mama, Daddy, I did wrong, I sinned. I did something I know I shouldn't have done. You, I did so I broke the rules. I did something I know you didn't want me to do. And you confess that. They confess that to you. There's never been a youngin' in the world in the right kind of home that ever got a whipping when that happened. What'd you do? Maybe prayed with them, thank God, had them pray and confess it to God, right? But now if you catch them in that thing and they're hard-hearted, then there has to be discipline. So what I'm trying to say is this. Will the Lord not treat us the same way if we just keep a short list and you, you've got something in your life today? Hey, you've got hard feelings towards somebody. Bitterness and hatred and malice in your heart. They don't even know about it. They don't even know. You think they know what they did, but they don't have a clue what they did. Huh? Well, would it be easier to come to the altar, confess it to God? What did the Bible say? Before you take a communion and you have an altar against you in your heart, come to the altar, go to your brother, make that thing right, then take communion. Is that what the Bible says? Wouldn't it be a whole lot better if you go ahead and take care of that? And with tears in your eyes, say, I want you to forgive me. I've had hard feelings towards you. Or I said something about you. I have done something. Would that not be better than to have it taken care of and the Lord to have to deal with it at the judgment seat of Christ? Because remember, when things are forgiven here, they're forgiven in heaven. Right? Oh, may God stir us up today. And I might stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Remember, the churning of milk does what? Bring forth butter. Take stirring, don't it? 
Constant stirring. Stir, 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 stir. Churn, churn. In all of our lives, we'll need to be stirred up that we can stand before the Lord one day with a finished product that he could be proud of and say, well done, good and faithful servant. Let's bow our heads. Thank you for your attention. Come on to the instruments today. In the Lord good? This morning, I want to ask this question. Is there someone today, say, the message, God spoke to my heart early on in the message, preacher, because I am not born again and saved, and I know God cannot do anything that he wants to do in my life till I yield to him and trust him as my Savior. And the Holy Spirit is convicting me. God is dealing with me. Preacher, I'm not saved today. I need to be saved. I want you to hold your hand up. And we want you to get saved today. God is dealing with your heart. Anyone like that? I'm not saved. Pray for me. I'm not saved. Preacher, I need to be saved. I need to be saved. Anyone like that? Let me ask you this this morning. How many of you would say, I'm glad I came this morning. I know sometimes the preacher will get on your toes. But it's for our benefit. Preacher, I came this morning and I needed to be stirred up. And you stirred me up. The Holy Spirit stirred me up. And I want to go a little further for God today. Pray for me that I could go a little further for God. How many say the Lord's helped you today and God stirred you today? Isn't that great? Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Bless the invitation. I'm glad, Lord, that we have these altars. Lord, we've got tissue boxes up here, not by accident. We want it to be used. We want there to be brokenness and tears. God, how, Lord, you don't despise that broken spirit. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Bless the invitation. Use the message. There's one here that's not saved. I pray they'll have it the courage and the grace to come today and get it nailed down and to get salvation established. We thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together, please. Let's Number say, 10. Number 10. People's on the you come on today, all right? Jesus, keep me near the cross. Just fountain right on. free to all a healing stream flows from the Lord, please be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Come up, dismiss us from prayer, brother, please. And appreciate all of you. God bless you.
Now, listen, we need to meet with the deacons for just a moment in the, over in the choir room, okay? And uh, it won't be anything long and drawn out, I don't think. So, but anyhow, glad you're here today. Appreciate you. And uh, be back tonight. Now, we'll have a special preacher tonight. And I'm excited about it. Brother John Reynolds is going to be here. He's a nationally known preacher that'll be preaching for us tonight. Don't forget about the books back there. And, uh, you know, if you want to take one and read it yourself, then give it to somebody. Uh, but let's get these out. Uh, what must I do to be saved? We've got those back there. Come and pray for us, Brother Terry. God bless you. Our precious Heavenly Father, we come to you this day, Lord, as humble as we know how. Thanking you, Lord, for again, for letting us come to thy house, the good Sunday school lesson, the good preached word of God. Lord, we pray for our church, Lord, that you just help it grow stronger for you, Lord. Bless each and every prayer request that's went out to stay. Lord, you know our, our needs in our life, Lord. We pray that you need them. Thank you again for everything you've done for us and going to do for us. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Amen. 